Hi, everybody. I'm Big Al with Country Music News International, and I am really actually thrilled to talk to the young lady that you're going to be uh, hearing some great stories from. She's critically acclaimed. She's a singer, a performer, a songwriter. Mary McGinnis is with us, and I am I am really thrilled to talk. I got a million questions, but I can't ask them all. Well, you can start. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Well, let's just start like this. January 26th, you've got a brand new album. It's going to drop to the public. It is called Shadow Catcher. I have already previewed two or three of the tracks, and it's absolutely just fantastic music. It's deep soul music. Very well done. Your voice is like an angel. But there is some experiences throughout your life, multicultural experiences. I think that people are going to hear in this album, and I'd like for you to kind of give us some background information on Mary McGinnis, because I think that people are going to understand that music and get more involved deeply with those songs like I did. Actually, I've been studying you for about the past week or so, and I found out that we were going to talk, because you really intrigued me with uh, your experiences around the world, and you've already been around the world since a child. So with that, how did you come from Fort Worth, Texas, to Korea, and then finally to New York City? And and I'll fill in the blanks along with that, but you've had some really big challenges. So with that, why don't you start? Okay. Um, it was Fort Hood, actually, uh, in Colleen, Texas. My dad um, was, well, he, he was in the Army at the time. He became a Green Beret. And I was born there. And then after a few years, I went to live with uh, relatives in Korea. I'm half uh, Korean, uh, half Irish, Scottish, uh, the McGinnis. Um, and then I came back to Texas. And then I went to New York to live with um, my dad's father and stepmother. And that's basically, uh, I grew up in Long Island. And, um, and then I went to school in New York City and lived there. And performed work there for a while and um you know it's just been a long and winding road it's it's you know I think whatever the plan is for you you never really you just kind of try to go with the flow so in Korea is there a lot of music and and did that uh when did you find out that music was probably going to be a part of and back to the question there are a lot of different music in Korea. I've never been there. Well, you know, it's funny. I mean, Korea has changed so much in the past 20 years. It's really had kind of a, you know, technological. I mean, a lot of things. It's really um, changed a lot. But I think the crazy thing is I didn't grow up with my Korean family. And I reconnected with them later. I really didn't know why I was always singing and everyone was like oh Mary's always singing but I found out later that my whole family they're musicians there and um you know I play the saxophone and they're band leaders and we're just full of musicians so it's funny I, I think that music you know sometimes it can be environmental but it's also I think a genetic predisposition to that so um I just always love music. I was always singing. I grew up singing in my church choir, um, but it was my high school music teacher who really encouraged me to pursue music. And at first I, I started with classical music. You know, I, I started out singing opera and um, things just kind of evolved into different things, I think. But one thing has been certain in my life is that music was my calling, that it, it's kind of the reason I get up every day, the air I breathe, it's the thing that, you know, keeps me going, you know. Well, I can hear that in you, and uh, the people will too. And everybody, once again, we're talking with Mary McGinnis. Uh, album is going to be released January the 26th. It's called Shadow Catcher. You're going to be able to get it on all the download platforms. But... There is one part that you didn't mention about your journey. Now, you went to the school there in Manhattan, which I guess is uh, somewhat classical training. 
But what really interested me about that is how you made your way to do that. You walked like 60 blocks to school. You would uh, take food that had been more or less discarded or thrown out to keep you uh, from going hungry. You work as a bartender, a hostess, a waitress. You are a very strong lady, especially being in New York City. Uh, that really, really amazes me. So give us the uh, backstory on Spain and working on the Broadway stage. You've grown from eating secondhanded food to Broadway. I mean, you know. <laughs> You know, I think uh, that, that kind of describes my life. It's always big highs and big lows. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I really uh, did s struggle in New York City. I think um, I was working like 50 hours a week and going to school and it was just uh, really difficult to do that on, you know, the pay you get. I think I started out working in the classical music department of this big music store and you're making five something an hour. It's really hard to live on that. And so, yeah, I would go to cafeteria there in the, the school and I asked them if they had any leftover food because I was so broken. And, and, you know, I have a story I've never told about. I had one pair of boots actually and they were old cowboy boots and I actually wore a hole through the bottom of them and I got one of those like planter warts and so I was like limping and finally I went to a podiatrist on the street just walked in and um you know I he, he basically he said he could tell that I it was a struggling student. He said, this is my contribution to the arts. And he didn't charge me and he took care of it so that I could walk. But um, I think those struggles, I think, really do make us stronger. And it also forces you to kind of face yourself and see, like, is this something I really want to do? Is it worth all the sacrifice and struggle? And I think it gives you a lot of confidence to know that you can withstand really anything to keep doing what you feel is that you were put here to do. And um, yes, I, I got a lucky break. I I, I was um, auditioning for uh, The King and I, and um, I, I got a role. I was first in the chorus and then the understudy, and then I wound up playing the leading role. And, um, but you know, the arts are, is so uh, up and down. You never know one week you have a paycheck and then, you know, a few weeks later, you might have to start waitressing or doing whatever job to pay your bills. And you have to kind of, I think, be willing to be okay with that, that lack of security. So. Well, to, to sum everything up, because I, I, I don't think the audience watching us right now would be bored with the questions of, and, but I think you've given us plenty of information uh, for these folks to go and check out this album that's going to be released on January the 26th, Dido Catcher. So your trip to Nashville, uh, sum it up, how did you get to Nashville and who is the team that you are working with right at this point that recorded this album? Because evidently they've had some awfully big challenges in their life because everybody sounds like me that they're about as deeply involved in this music that you're recording, just like you. So, you know, I mean, you have to pick the correct musicians. You must have a great producer. So if you'd like to mention those right quick, uh, you know, that would be more than fine. Oh, yes, I would definitely. I was so lucky to, I didn't know many people in Nashville. I had been coming here once a month to just write a music row with some people. And then a few months later, I just sat up in bed one morning and said, I need to move to Nashville. And two months later, you know, I moved to Nashville from uh, Los Angeles and I was lucky to be connected to Joe Pasapia. Like I said, I think I knew like two people in, <laughs> in Nashville and, um, and I just knocked on his door and we started talking and it turned into, I don't know, two and a half hour conversation. And then he had some guitars on his wall. And I, I said, Oh, do you mind if I play you a couple of songs? And, and uh, started playing some songs and then we just decided to work together. You know, you either know it's right or, or not, you know, you, you have that vibe with someone. And, and I was so lucky to find Joe because 
I said to him, you know, at the end of making this record, you didn't just get the record, you really got me, which I feel like was maybe the first time I felt like a producer really listened to me. I, I never felt that I was not going to be heard or that I was walking on eggshells or that I couldn't, you know, really say exactly how I envisioned this music and how I wanted it to sound. And he was really the perfect counterpart to that. So I was very blessed to have found him. He really and, was. I, yeah. I heard that in the music. I heard that in your singing. You opened up. I mean, I don't know you. I did. But I heard from you. I can tell. Thank you. And, and you are opening up. That's what intrigued me. I have felt very comfortable. I felt very comfortable. And the musicians um, are all, you know, world-class musicians with Jen Gunderman on all the keys and Robert Kearns and uh, Jamie Dick and, um, and Mickey uh, Raphael, who's done the harmonica on all of Willie Nelson's uh, records. He's been playing with him for 50 years. Um, and that was mind blowing because I, when he came in to play, um, on a couple of songs, you haven't heard them yet. I, um, having him stand there in front of me, I just couldn't stop. I just kept getting choked up and, and teary. And then at the end of it, he just sat down and pulled out Stardust. We talked about Stardust. He said, let's just pull it out. We listened to almost the entire record of Stardust. And he was telling us all these stories about how they were recording it in the bathroom of this house that Willie had rented. And, and he was in behind the shower curtain. And, and I mean, it's like, it, it's like, hey, if that's what it took to make that magical record, one of the greatest, I think one of the biggest selling records of all time and one of the greatest records I think ever made, um, it was just, what a thrill for me. And it, that's why I said, I live for those days and that's what makes it all worthwhile. Super music, that, that's all I can say. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna tell you this. What you do is, is you go purchase that album and download it. And you've listened to this conversation between Mary McGinnis and myself. So if you want to know all about Mary McGinnis, you listen to her music. We can sit here and talk all day. Just those songs that's on, you know, on the album, three or four minute songs, you're going to learn a whole lot about it. Just listen to her singing. I mean that. Uh, I feel like I already know you. you know, I'm just really thrilled i really meant that when i said talk to you but let's get into the music part of it uh touchstone that was the latest single it released back in december mm -hmm. so i guess sum up the the complete album that of what, what it represents you but what are your thoughts well um i wrote that title track with uh jay knowles and it was actually the song that gave me Ajita, gave me the hardest. I think I rewrote that song a hundred times, the music. Um, I could not find the right music for those lyrics. And finally, I came up with the right music for it. You know, I think I came up with Shadow Catcher because I felt like you know, the past year that I was in Nashville, it was a, a difficult year, you know, and a lot of things were going on out of my control. And um, my dad was sick. I broke my ankle. We were mo moved a bunch of times. It was just a lot of things. And I think it was about not just like transforming the light or finding light in the dark. I think it's about seeing in the dark. I think it's about you have to be able to keep moving and, and keep moving forward and doing the very best you can and know that there's a plan for you. And really it's about whatever you wanna call it, faith, trust, surrender, and knowing that you were put here for a reason and that you can only follow your heart and really do everything to the best of your ability and everything else will be taken care of. And I, I think that that's really how I was living. And it's kind of been a transformation that's happened over you know, slowly over a period of time, I think when you struggle a lot and, and different, um, not that every day is a struggle or anything, but meaning 
you know, you just, you just learn as you go through life and all its experiences, you know, as I'm sure listeners can all relate to, we all like to think our suffering is unique. I think I read that somewhere, but it's not. <laughs> we all have our trials and tribulations. And we I did. think that's where they came from. Yeah. Well, I think it's how you address that uh, trial and that tribulation you get by eating secondhand food and walking holes in your boots and going 60 blocks in New York City. And I think it's a, a great story for some young person out there sitting there wondering, like, what am I going to do? And how am I going to do this? You've got a very inspiring story. Thank you. Uh, your music as well, it's so full. It tells the story of Mary McGinnis. Once again, the album Shadow Catcher, January 26th, everyone, is going to be released. Mary, I can't remember your website because I was on it and I didn't check out the address. I just, I was so intrigued with everything on it. So what is your website? Oh, thank you for checking it out. <laughs> uh, it's Mary McG, www.marymcgmcg.com. All right, there it is. And you know, on all the download platforms, I'm assuming Facebook, Instagram, and all that cool stuff. Yes, it's all Mary McGinnis official, all across the board, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. So, and it's Guinness like the beer for anyone out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's great stuff. I mean, not the beer, but Mary McGinnis, it's all great stuff. <laughs> I know the beer is like, I have a few sips, like a St. Patrick's Day. I'm like, this is like a meal. So yeah. No. <laughs> well, honey, it's it's nice to visit with you. It's nice to get a chance and talk and, and laugh. And yeah, folks, we like to laugh. And we talked about the challenge. Kind of look back on it now and say, hey, yeah, yeah, I did all that. But uh, listen, I wish you luck. And is there anything else that you would like to tell the, the people out there that's listening or going to be watching what we're doing right now? Well, I would just like to say, um, always keep the faith. And um, I I saw this somewhere, I think it was a quote from Tina Turner. And she said, she always chooses hope over despair. There's really no other, other choice. And I think um, that's a good way to live your life, to live with hope and expectancy of great things. Dance like Tina Turner? What was that? Can you dance like Tina Turner? Oh, I don't think anyone can dance like Tina Turner. I saw her last show, um, her real farewell show uh, at, uh, I think it was Staples. And man, there were, she had all these dancers around her, you know, we're 20 years old or whatever. All you did was look at Tina. You couldn't take your eyes off of her. And there is no one who moved like her. And that, you know what, that dance, that joy, that was from, the very big life that she led, right? Yeah, fantastic. So are you. January 26th, everybody, the album Shadow Catcher. You will not be sorry. If you want to go get involved in so soulful music. Mary McGinnis. Mary, thank you. Thank you so much for having me today.